بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم مس فرحانہ ظفر فرام گارڈس پبلک ہائر سیکنڈری اسکول وان آئی ایم یور سائنس ٹیچر اینڈ آئی وانٹ ٹو کانگریچولیٹ یو فار بینگ پروموٹیڈ ٹو دا نیکسٹ کلاس اینڈ ویلکم یو آل ٹو کلاس ایٹ بفور اسٹارٹنگ ٹو ڈیز لیکچر آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو شیئر دا سلیبس آف دا فرسٹ ٹرم ٹو تھاؤزنڈ ٹوینٹی اینڈ دا چیپٹرز Number one, the nervous system. Number two, chemical reactions. Number three, kidneys in excretion. And number four, pressure. Students, in these four chapters, two chapters are from biology, that is, the nervous system and the kidneys in excretion. One from chemistry, that is, chemical reaction, and one from physics, that is, pressure. So, students, We will start our first term with the chapter which is from biology portion that is the nervous system. In this chapter we will discuss the following topics. Definition of the nervous system, function of the nervous system, parts of the nervous system, central nervous system in which we discuss brain and spinal cord. and the last peripheral nervous system in which we discuss neurons or you can say nerve fibers but in today's lecture we will cover starting four topics that is nervous system's definition functions and parts of nervous system and the central nervous system so let's begin students the nervous system The nervous system is defined as the system which coordinates the actions of the organism and transmits signals between different parts of the body. It is the most important system of your body which creates a coordination amongst different system of the body and also controlled all the sense organs of the body like ears, eyes, nose skin and tongue it means that every single action that you perform is because of the coordination of nervous system your nervous system controls everything you do including breathing moving smelling decision taking etc students Your nervous system is like your body's personal computer which is constantly collecting, sorting and responding information around you. Now, the basic components of nervous system includes brain, spinal cord and nerves. Okay students, now we will understand the functions of the nervous system. Our nervous system controls and coordinates all the activities of the body. It also enables the body to respond and adapt to changes that occur both inside and outside of the body. So students, our nervous system is responsible to respond the messages it receives. It receives messages from sense organs by the help of nerves and respond to these messages by the help of brain. All this function involves the participation of our sense organs, nerves, spinal cord and brain. How, have you ever thought that how does your nose tell that cookies are baking in the kitchen? And if somebody throws ball towards you what do you do you quickly catch that ball if a big dog jumps out in front of you you begin to run and if you have any experience like that you touched boiling water definitely you felt sharp distressing sensation called pain and that pain was your nervous system's response to a change in your environment. As students, your nervous system tells you to stop touching that 
and your nervous system orders you to move your hand quickly how all these activities possible it is because that you have working nervous system your nervous system is that system which handled all the responses reactions and activities of your body it collects information from sensory receptors that monitors the body internal and external conditions and then integrates the information and transfer responses with the help of nerves so conclusively we can say that the nervous system decides how the body should respond and controls that response now students we will learn about the parts of the nervous system parts of the nervous system so students our nervous system in reality is a very complex and involved system made up of billions of cells that carry out countless functions every minute of the day to best understand how this entire system works we categorize them into two parts the central nervous system or you can also call it cns consist of brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system consist of nerves or you can say neurons so students we'll explore the peripheral nervous system later on and first look at the central nervous system central nervous system the central nervous system comprised of the brain and spinal cord it receives and interprets information from sensory nerves and send commands through motor nerves students first of all i want to tell you about the sensory nerves and the motor nerves sensory nerves are those which carry messages from sense organs and give it to brain and motor nerves are those which bring messages back from brain to sense organs now the central nervous system students the brain and spinal cord together form the central nervous system or cns it acts as the control center of the body by providing its processing memory and regulation systems central nervous system controls most functions of the body and mind in which the brain is the center of our thoughts the interpreter of our external environment and the origin of control over body movement students the cns is so named because it integrates the received information and coordinates and influences the activity of all body parts not only this the central nervous system is also responsible for the higher functions of the nervous system such as language creativity expression emotions etc the brain is the seat of consciousness and determines who we are as individuals while spinal cord covers the area of involuntary actions or you can say subconscious actions okay students now we will study about the brain and the spinal cord separately the human brain so students it is protected within skull it means that it is enclosed in a box of bones called cranium for protection and internally it is covered by three membranes called meninges it is weight about 1.5 kg it is the center of memory intelligence and control it integrates sensory information and directs 
motor responses students it is an amazing three pound organ that controls all functions of the body interprets information from the outside world and incorporates the essence of the mind and soul the brain has nerves which directly connect it to the organs of the head but most nerves are connected to the brain by way of the spinal cord our brain receives information through our five senses such as sight smell touch taste and hearing it assembles the messages in a way that has meaning for us and can store that information in our memory the brain controls our thoughts memory and speech movement of the arms and legs and the functions of many organs within our body students the most important point about brain is it is the seat of our intelligence learning memory etc now we will learn about the parts of brain parts of human brain students although human brain has many parts but today we will discuss three basic and important parts of the human brain cerebrum which is also called fur brain cerebellum which is also called as mid brain medulla oblongata or brain stem which is also called as hind brain now let's start with the first part that is cerebrum cerebrum students cerebrum is also called as for brain it is highly developed in man as compared to other animals it is the seat of thinking intelligence decision making and problem solving the cerebrum has two halves and we can also say that it is divided into two parts right hemisphere and left hemisphere right hemisphere controls the muscles of the left side of the body while left hemisphere controls the muscles of the right side of the body right hemisphere is responsible for creative and artistic tasks and activities while left hemisphere controls understanding remembering and thinking cerebrum is very important because it is responsible to store memory to analyze different sensory messages to develop learning students do you know that our intelligence also lies here now move to the next cerebellum students cerebellum is the most important part of the brain and it is also called as the little brain it is located at the back of the brain it controls body balance and maintains posture of the body it also coordinates muscles during body movement like walking and running our cerebellum receives information from the sensory systems the spinal cord and other parts of the brain and then regulates motor movements the cerebellum coordinates voluntary movements such as posture balance coordination and speech resulting in smooth and balanced muscular activity of the body it also involves in controlling eye movements and hearing reflexes but students if there is a damage in cerebellum it is a loss of coordination the inability to judge distance and also the inability to perform rapid movements remember students cerebellum also called as mid brain medulla oblongata or brain stem 
students this part is located at the base of the brain and that's why we call it hindbrain also it controls many activities like blinking of eye breathing heartbeat etc it also maintains body temperature students medulla oblongata lies on the top of the spinal cord and that's why it acts as a relay center between cerebrum and cerebellum to the spinal cord medulla oblongata controls all the autonomic nervous activities like swallowing hiccuping digestion etc do you know students that medulla oblongata is really an important part of the brain because if medulla damaged your brain and spinal cord won't be able to transmit information to one another effectively damaged medulla can leads to breathing problem also now students i hope that all of you understand all the three parts of the brain now we'll move towards the last one the second part of the central nervous system that is spinal cord spinal cord students humans and other vertebrate animals have a single tubular nerve cord called the spinal cord it is safely protected by the vertebra the bones of the backbone or spine it is a long thin tubular structure which is made up of bundles of nerves that run down from the brain stem in the central cavity of vertebral column actually it is a downward extension of the brain and constitute the second part of central nervous system students like brain spinal cord is also enclosed in protective covering named meninges spinal cord is such an important organ and it is concerned with the following functions it provides vital link between body and brain it transfers information to brain and also concerned with the transmissions of commands of brain to the lower body parts it controls and coordinate reflexes we can also call it as involuntary actions like reflex actions it provides structural support and builds a body posture and it also facilitates flexible movements so students i hope that everyone have understood completely the central nervous system in this way we have finished to our today's lecture and in the next lecture we'll definitely discuss the second part of the central nervous system that is peripheral nervous system review of today's lecture in today's lecture we discussed nervous system definition components and function parts of nervous system central nervous system brain and its parts cerebrum cerebellum medulla oblongata and spinal cord home assignment students for your home assignment you have to draw a diagram of the human brain which is on page number 5 of your science book first chapter the nervous system students all of you must submit this diagram in a whatsapp group and if you have any query regarding any topic so please you can ask in a whatsapp group thank you